I parry everything is actually amazing and it has so many good lessons that make me so happy because I get to talk about all of them. Of course, there's being kind, but I want to take a step deeper and get into a nice thing called unconditional positive regard. It is important to provide unconditional positive regard or in other words, show support for people in any way you can because it is necessary for the mental and emotional growth of someone, but also because it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing. Being nice comes at no cost and the reward for it is well worth it, but I'll explain that later. Right now, I'll explain how all of this fits into the new anime called I Parry Everything. Bye. Well, this show is a fantasy comedy series that follows a man named Nor who is supposedly talentless. He goes to train in every school which may lead him to be an adventurer, but he fails at every single one, being less than mediocre. In fact, they make it very clear that he's sub-bottom tier placing him in this F tier that isn't very popular because it's so unheard of. His parents died before all of this, so he figured he'd become an adventurer like in the adventure books they read to him. But obviously that didn't work out. At his home, he practices the one skill he's good at, parrying, which you do a lot of in Souls games. You see, he was so garbage at everything else that he honed this one skill, even if he did community service for a living. And let me tell you, this guy could parry a thousand swords at once. Like, he was good at this. Anyways, during a job, he protects a girl of status, Lady Lindbergh, or Lean, from a minotaur in a cave by parrying its large weapon, while also utilizing some of the skills he learned in school. He's pretty ignorant in how helpful or strong he is, which is part of the comedic factor. Side note, I see a ton of people complain about his stupidity, and to that I have to say, it's a comedy. So have fun with it. The main character is dumb. That's the bit. If you don't like it, no one's forcing you to watch this show. I'm sure there are thousands of other anime to watch, or better yet, go watch a Western show. I literally saw comments saying they wanted to petition Japanese writers to stop making their male protagonists incompetent. Like, if you don't like the way the Japanese write their stories, either A, go read from different authors, or B, stop reading Japanese stories. Moving on. Okay, so you might be wondering, how does this include unconditional positive regard? Well, I'll explain in a second, but first, I should probably tell you what unconditional positive regard is, and if you already know, skip to this timestamp. For those of you taking a psychology course, albeit in college or AP Psychology in high school, you may come across the Carl Rogers concept called unconditional positive regard. I've said it like a hundred times by now. Essentially, it's a way of treating people to ensure they have the AGE requirements so they can develop properly. And AGE stands for acceptance for accepting the person, genuineness for being genuine about it, and empathy for understanding where they're coming from. This is often encouraged for parents to use when talking to their kids. You can let them know they're still a good person even if they misbehave every once in a while. This could also be used for lovers where you tell your significant other that you'll always be there for them even if you might argue. You see what I mean? The idea is to provide security for those you care about or to help them see the bright side of things. You accept them for who they are. That's just a little humanist psychology lesson for you. Yeah, my videos can be educational. Anyways, I hope that's enough context to connect this to I Parry Everything. Okay, so Nor impacts plenty of characters in the story just by his ignorance and innate kindness, but I'll talk about the most significant one, Rolo. Rolo is a child demon folk who lived in servitude for most of his life. His daily routine was waking up, going out to get laughed at, going back to eat slop, getting beat, and doing it all over again. He only got to see the outside world when his owner told him to use this Black Death Dragon, which Nor calls a frog, on the capital. You see, everyone in the city treats demon folk like the Gith Yankee from Baldur's Gate, if that makes sense. They are hated, and considered subhuman demons, vermin, or whatever. Nor, however, being the orphan he is, just thinks Rolo's a regular boy who's skinny and alone. In fact, he even wonders if this assassin who showed up to kill him was taking him back to his home, completely unaware that his slaver sent a bounty on him. Anyways, Nor constantly praises Rolo for his ability to communicate with monsters. It's how he was traveling with the frog without it attacking him until the concealment was broken. And this constant praise is stated throughout pretty much the whole series from this point, where Nor attributes any time monsters do anything non-hostile to Rolo's abilities. Na, 
この魔竜をそこまで手なずけておるのかすんごいのマジすごいのはあロロはすごいんだいやそうじゃなくてこの竜はノールのことを。I mean, he even says Rolo has a nice skill, which I'll expand upon its significance later. But you see, saying all of these nice things to Rolo, who we know has been laughed at and criticized for his nature and abilities, creates this new perspective for him. Something completely alien. It's support, no matter what. Nord never uses Rolo's identity against him, and doesn't even consider any reason to. All he knows is that Rolo has been a great help. And like him, is orphaned and could use some love. Anyways, after Nor saves the two countries featured in this show, he requests that the king provide Rolo with his own place to stay, complete with clothes and food, since these rich people constantly want to reward him for his good deeds. It's really sweet because we've seen how awful it was for Rolo to eat before, and now he gets to eat all this real food. And dang, Inez looks really good in that dress. But he gets to eat a meal across from someone that doesn't want to beat him to a pulp for the first time, and he literally cries. I think it's a good symbol that this basic meal, though it is pretty extravagant, means so much to Rolo since he's never had real food before. It's also kind of funny how he just eats the butter like it's cake, but it's amazing how much Nor can impact someone's life just by being kind, and I think that's a good lesson for you viewers too. You know, maybe all of my anime videos will be about the importance of kindness and acceptance. We already went through this in my Dungeon Meishi video. Anyway, another example of this is with Ines. You see, she has this skill that makes her a living legend. Essentially, she can summon this really strong magic that can turn into an unbreakable sword or shield at will. As a child, when she first realized she got the gift, and after someone accidentally hurts himself by trying to touch it, she was immediately turned into a soldier. I think it's subtle, but there's even a little shock and smile on her face when Nora says her talent is remarkable. I hope further down the line, Inez gets more stuff to do and maybe gets to show some of her personality because she seems like she could be a cool character. Even if she is a stoic knight, there are plenty of cool stoic knights in fiction, like Leda from Elden Ring, though she is kind of kooky. Uh, but the unconditional positive regard here is him saying she has a cool ability even though she felt like it was dangerous and that she might really hurt someone again. I think it gave her a new perspective on it, which was nice. Another character he did this with was Lean. Of course, he saved her life, so she forced him to take her under his wing. And I want to say throughout the whole show, she admires his attitude and way of life. But one specific moment in the show is when they're fighting the large goblin emperor. You see, Nor has no prior knowledge of what a goblin was. And for my psychology folks, you could say he had to form a new prototype or heuristic right then and there. <laughs> But anyways, Lean is clearly afraid, but Nor assumes since she's a B-rank adventurer that she's fought plenty of goblins like this all the time. I mean, even we, the viewer, have an idea of what goblins should look like, but this dude stays calm and helps Lean realize that she should not overcomplicate her problems. <laughs> This is another good lesson for you viewers, that if you have some big thing to tackle, whether it's a problem, a project, or a plate of food, start by boiling it down to its essence and working from there. You may, like Lean, find a way to critically counter the problem, all because you took the time to assess the situation. Lean takes this approach a lot more as the show goes on, especially by seeing how Nor treats Rolo. She realizes that showing compassion, or being practical, is better than blindly fearing things as society has taught her to do. 
Also, be sure to give yourself some credit for your skills. It's something Lee never really does. I mean, yes, she considers herself skilled, but she doesn't realize how good of a magic user she is. Oh, and the same goes for Nor, but it's part of his character that he's ignorant to his own strength. But anyways, the unconditional positive regard here is Nor reminding Lean that she's powerful, despite the fact that this goblin is obviously stronger than her, and that inspires her to be better and understand the extent of her abilities. Maybe I should have named this video the amazing lessons of I parry everything, because it really does have some great things to take away from it. It's also a really interesting aspect of this show where it presents Noor saying or doing something in one sequence, and then maybe in the next sequence, it'll give the other characters perspective, and we see how his actions impacted them. Noor says and does all of these nice things that can really make people's day without even realizing it. That's why it's important to be as supportive as you can, because you have no idea what goes on behind closed doors or what pain people hide. So it's good to be in the practice of being nice unconditionally. Find things that are amazing about the people you know and care about. It won't hurt you. Now, if the video isn't long enough, I decided to give more of my thoughts on this show, but just enough so that it's not a review, just in case you guys want me to make an actual review for this series. But here are some things that I found interesting. First, this show reminds me a lot of Fate. I mean, they have Saber, Lancer, Caster, Assassins, Rider, and Archer. Dang, they even got unlimited blade works. Also, Enos literally has the same vibe as Saber with a dress bottom, night greaves, a breastplate, and night gauntlets with blonde hair and an ahoge, but similar in appearance to Jeanne d'Arc with purple eyes and yellower hair. She's also a sword user. Nor reminds me of Shiro because both kind of suck at being an adventurer slash magus, but they are good at a single skill that should be useless. For Shiro, it would be projections, and for Nor, it would be parrying. And these guys are really good at these skills. <clears throat> also, check out my Fate Stay Night visual novel series on my channel. It's uh, streaming on weekends. <laughs> anyway, some characters legit have noble phantasms in this show, and you can't tell me Lancer's design isn't based on the skin-tight suits that Lancers wear in Fate. Also, I really do like the humor in the show. I think Nor being dumb is funny. It allows for characters to interact with him in interesting ways, and they even get to laugh too. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fact that it's a main plot point of the show means it's something you just have to accept if you want to watch the show. I genuinely think it's great how clueless he is because it means he's very sincere in what he does. Also, there's this moment where he dismantles the Emperor's army and makes him pee his pants. I just thought it was funny how this Emperor was genuinely like, what the hell, <laughs> when watching all of it happen. Anyways, those are my thoughts on I Parry Everything. As of the time I'm writing this, the final episode is yet to release, but I think it's a pretty good show so far. This show has some really cool characters that I could see getting more prominent traits in a follow-up season. I heard the manga isn't even done adapting the light novel, and I've read neither, so I'm excited to see where the anime picks up after the final episode, if there is a second season. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in anime content, check out the playlist at the end of this video. I'm also streaming the Fate visual novel as I mentioned before and maybe I'll stream some more stuff from Fate Extra. You guys just show me some support and I'll know you actually want to see it. Remember to be kind to those around you and show your support to your peers. You never know who really needs it. Have a great day, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, comment what else you want to see, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Yeah.